everybody. I have been meaning to check my Schomburgia for a couple of weeks now. Been mentioning it quite a while. And the other day when I was doing the silicon on this orchid, I noticed a very nasty smell coming out of the pot. Which is concerning because that means there's rot in it. So let's have a look and see what the damage is. She is growing new roots. There, you can see that she is growing new roots. Normally with inorganic meter, one wouldn't have to be so pedantic about the timing, but considering that you don't want to, you know, push your luck too much with orchids, it's always best to be a little bit more attentive about what stage of growth the orchid is in. Let me see if I can get her out. Oh look, there's a new growth coming right at the edge. So we have to take care of it. I suppose the timing is right. Just going around squeezing. The pot is, feels rock hard. Let's try again. Nope. Not yet. Here we go. I can feel her giving now. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate that you're taking the time to watch this video. And let's see what we've got here. Yeah, there's a lot of dead roots. I need to be a little bit more cautious with this one. I bought this one in 2018 from Thai Orchids and More. Now you can see, you can see how the roots get themselves entangled with the microfiber, which is not a problem because I have a lot of roots in the pot so I can be a little bit rigorous about yanking that off. And seeing as it's all inorganic and they know each other, it will all go back in this, not in the same pot, but the microfiber will be used again. I just dermed an ant colony as well. I don't need this anymore. And look at that, this bulb is coming right off. Okay, goody, we can check the rhizome. Normally I wouldn't worry about all this lecker that is on my roots, but I am going to clean her up because most of these are dead. I don't understand the stench that I smelt coming from the pot. The roots look brown, but they're still firm. Nope, they're compromised. So we got it in time. The smell brought it to my attention that instead of just talking about it, I have to get around to actually doing it. And uh, that at least some of the rot was flushed out. Let me make sure that I don't use, put all the dead roots into the media I'm going to reuse. That would make it a little bit more difficult later on. But um, in general, we got it in time. These roots look bad, but I don't think, yes, they are bad. 
but you can see there's a lot of new activity and we'll take advantage of that right now so that we do as little disturbance as little damage as possible I'll take my time with this and I'll be back when I'm done so what I'm doing here is finding my way through the system and I tap kind of give it a slight squeeze on the top move my way down to where I get to the part that I can feel is compromised and soft and then I cut up into the hard part so that the root is left green and viable I know this doesn't look like it but in this case this is a good root tip so that is a good root tip and that's what I'm doing right now easing my way up through the orchid these old roots and moving up and up and seeing if I find the good part and that's where I cut into to rejuvenate the orchid you can see that this is a branching orchid and that might just be like one centimeter half an inch at a time it could be considered tedious but when it comes to orchids this is what we want to protect is the root system to the best of our ability and I'll just keep going and when we get to the rhizome I'll get back a prime example of why it's always good to take your time I'm going root by root so I'm thinking that this part in the back is compromised and then when I take it off I see it has a nice branching shiny root growing taking my time and still this happens 30 minutes later I have pretty much found my way all the way to the top of the rhizome from within the root ball but I'm still finding a little bit a few scragglers where they are snapped off I just go above and cut off there is quite an intense smell coming from the bottom of the rhizome right here is the worst if one were to go by odor I, this area doesn't smell very nice but I think having trimmed the roots you see these look dead but they're actually very very firm not that one though so what's left to do is take off that back that back bulb this one and I hope that you can see this is the one I want to remove it gives me more access inside for other roots which are there but I have to be just a little bit careful I mean I could go all ninja <laughs> pun intended but there's a direction going this way and then here is another bit of rhizome going the other way so we'll see what happens when I cut in how many pieces I get This back bulb actually was the one that led into two different directions.
We still have not gotten to the bottom of this one. Where are you attached? Where are you attached? I have two pieces now. That means we are going to be able to use the other pot. So that was the one that was holding it all together. Now the idea of course is should I put it all up together or separate them but I think I'm going to get more out of it by separating them. Gently. So now it's just being held together by the roots into twine. This will also give both pieces a fresh start in the pot with regards to oxygen. And that is a great thing when dealing with LECA and self-watering. You don't want to forget the oxygen exchange in the pot, despite the fact that you have mainly a very moist environment. So this will kickstart both of them to do something. If I can separate them, I'm still looking for the roots that are holding it together. There's one right here where my finger is, but I don't want to cut it, but I may have to as it's gone right, oh there we go, that's one. Anybody else like taking apart necklaces? Not apart, sorry, you know like when you have a knot in a necklace? Yeah, I love doing that kind of stuff. So, look at that. Two pieces. And as much as I don't like having to add space with another pot, this will be nice for a giveaway one day. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to look to the future. And consider some giveaways. At certain milestones. All right. I was not expecting to come out of this repot with two pieces. Now, I'm going to keep them as they are. I'm going to soak them a little bit in some nutrition. They have not long had their silicon bath, so there's enough strength in them, but just to not push my luck, I'll be back in a couple of hours once they have had a little bit more of a nutritious soak so that they can recover a little bit faster and that is the plan anyway when when i soak something before repotting it that is the plan and then we have to cover up the cuts with cinnamon i'll be back Okay, I watched a video back 
I can't film it again, but I do apologize very much for that rogue branch that was in the way in the previous clip. So I'm really sorry about that. I'm just really glad that it's out of focus and the fact of what I was doing is in focus. And while everything's been soaking, another one came off. So I have three bulbs that have come off and this one can go from as far as I'm concerned. This one is useless. There's nothing there. Um, this one I've already applied some cinnamon on because I would say it's kind of interesting. The eyes are black, but I don't know. I don't think anything's going to come of it, but thinking is not knowing. I'm going to hold on to this one. And a teeny tiny one also came off in the process of soaking. But this one has two green eyes left and right. So I'm going to put those away and see what happens. But first, I have prepared my pots. Let's get some hydrogen peroxide out. And the reason I'm doing this is because I did smell the rotting. Now, I don't mind using 3% hydrogen peroxide on wet, on wet roots. I use it abundantly. It does dilute the concentration, that is true. But for the little that I need it, it's perfectly fine to do it on wet roots. It still does the job. And let's get to repotting. This little guy is now an orchid of its own. It has a new growth there. And it has another new growth right there. And it is one continuous rhizome that is circling around and in on itself, which is kind of cool. I don't need a support for this at all. These guys are sturdy. They're definitely not blooming size. And the bloom spikes, spikes would be so big that they actually wouldn't be able to be staked with the support that I would have in mind anyway. So no support. And this one is a long way off blooming. Unless it surprises me. Now, another thing we always say is put the oldest part of the orchid into the back so that the new growths have space. But seeing as these new growths are coming left and right, I'm positioning my orchid in the middle. go. Little pat here and there to settle the lecker in and around the root ball on the bottom. So I have my old lecker from the previous pot here to my left, which I will be using back into the pot where the both of them actually came from. Let's see what happens with this. I hope that it grows on well because now I've got it into my head to make it a giveaway plant. So I better, I better do it justice so that it does well in order to be representative and good enough for a giveaway. I should have thought about peeling these sheets off before. Silly woman. This piece has also got some new growths coming. So there's one there. And another one there. 
So we have potential here. We have potential. Oh, stop it, Nina. I can't help myself. All right. Let's get you situated. You remember this pot. Now I won't be putting fertilized water in because of the hydrogen peroxide, but they got enough nutrition during their soak pre-potting up. And another thing I'm not going to do, even though I have an old part in the back, once again, it's been cut. It could trigger some eyes in the back to actually activate. It could. So it goes straight into the middle of the pot. Like that. And how strange that we need to fill it up. Considering I did not take away or add anything. This is exactly the amount of lecker that was in the pot previously. I'm surprised that I have to add, but okay, never mind. There's plenty where that came from. Let's see, let's keep these eyes clear. Oh, lecker, you can stay in the middle, but you can't stay on my on the eye. All right, you're gonna be stubborn. There we go. Settle you in and make sure the eyes are not buried. The new ones need some space to grow. And that looks good enough for me, for now, and we shall see how we get on. This is the first plant, so the label goes in. Here is the second plant, I made another label, and there it goes in. That was a twist and turn of repotting. I hope whatever was trying to take down my orchid, that smell that it goes away, now that it has been cleaned up. So thank you everybody very much for watching. I appreciated your company very much. And take care everybody, have a wonderful day. Bye.